What's up, what's up, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? It is your favorite pastor, this side of the Mississippi, and hopefully this side of heaven as well. Pastor Keenan with my favorite sidekick, my only sidekick, uh, for <laughs> for 50 episodes or so now, you know, uh, it's my sidekick, Nick. Nick, how you doing, bro? Oh, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Better than people in Florida right now. But, awesome, but, you know. Well, this is true. I give you that, man. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully it, the storm is going to be tame. Uh, hopefully it won't be as bad as, you know, you know how the media is, man. They're going to build it up, you know, like it's, uh, the worst thing since, uh, you know, the Dallas Cowboys football season last year. But, Ooh. uh, I know oh, that's yeah. rough, dog. All uh, I know is that gas prices went up by like 40 cents because of it. So. I know, I know. It was crazy. Like, yeah. uh, I seen it go from like 295 to like 315 or something like no, really like quick. 49. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, man. Well, you know, I don't venture over to that side of town. So I don't know. I don't know where you're getting gas at, man, but you got to come over to the good side of town. Yeah, just, I just feel bad for our listeners over in like California and Stuff, oh yeah, this like, is true. You have gas for three, four. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're gonna book a plane ticket, fly yeah. it out. Like we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna carry it back with us and see what happens. But we hope you had a blessed week. We continue to pray for the people in Florida for sure uh, with the hurricane coming through. And uh, like I said, you know, besides that, uh, hopefully you've had a blessed week. Everything's went wonderful for you. I know it's only Tuesday, but hey, that's a good thing, right? Like if if the if the weeks went good so far, then you got something to build on to work towards um, the rest of the week. So uh, we are so thankful uh, that you're tuning in that you're listening that you're downloading and uh you know that you're doing all that you do continue to spread the word uh continue to tell your friends about it say hey man check out these people listen to what they're talking about it's something fresh it's something new hopefully it's a new spin on the gospel uh how we're breaking it down and putting it into kind of just you know everyday terms where you can understand it just a little bit better uh but either way uh we had a blessed week again nick we had a wonderful service great altar call um packed house uh and i mean man i'm telling you man god's just doing some great things uh god is just uh working and moving man and 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 every single week uh it continues to get better uh I, I just, man, I tell you, I, you know, whenever I walk in that building on Sunday mornings now, it's just like uh, I walk in and, and my expectancy level is through the roof going, what is God going to do today? How is he going to just mess somebody's life up? Uh, and and I'm telling you, man, he just continues to do it time and time and time again. So very thankful for that. Um, as always, I tell you what, Nick, I'm going to change up the flow, bro. Uh, tell all the good people out there that's listening about 37 different ways that they can contact us or that they can reach out to us ways. yeah or, or four you know yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, you we'll know get there you know yeah, right. there's a, the website fruitionchurchky.org you know uh-huh. that's kind of the hub for everything Absolutely. You, you can get to youtube from there you can get to facebook from there instagram from there um you know tiktok from there even i think maybe i don't know it's everything's from there right uh, yeah. podcast is on there um you know we got it's a pretty good landing page for basically everything you there's can a, give through there yep you can give through there Woo! there's a prayer request form on there there's <laughs> oh, all kinds of stuff oh, i should have i should have laid with the prayer request before the Given. My yeah, bad, it's bro. Fine. It's fine. It's My fine. bad. It's fine. We'll, we'll pray for you. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and then, of course, you know, you got YouTube, Fruition Church of Hodgenville, uh, Facebook, and then, you know, we also are on, um, you know, all kinds of different places, all kinds of different uh, things and ways to contact us. Uh, Venmo, if you want to give that way, um, you know, if you just feel led, you know, we are still trying to raise money for a better uh, video equipment uh, Absolutely. For, for our uh, church there. Um, so, you know, those guys who do listen or watch us on uh, Sunday mornings don't have to look at us like we're ants on a screen. This is true, man. And uh, yeah, we're getting there. Uh, you know, I haven't even told my church this yet, but uh, we're about halfway there almost, uh, about $2,500 in of the 5000 goal. We've only been doing this for about four. Four, four to five months, something like that. So, I mean, that's it's fantastic, man, because we're literally dropping change in a water jug every week. Mm-hmm. You know, it's amazing what, what a little bit of change can add up to. So, very thankful for that. Very thankful for that. Uh, today's sermon or tonight's topic or whatever you want to, whenever you'll listen to this, uh, simply called Don't Judge My Praise. Don't Judge My Praise. Uh, it comes from 2 Samuel 6. Uh, we're going from verse 12, and then we'll work our way down just a little bit right here. Uh, I want to I want to read the verses, and then we'll just dive into this. It says, it was reported to King David that God had prospered Obed-Edom and his entire household because of the chest of God. So David thought, I'll be, or I'll get that blessing for myself, and went and brought up the chest of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David, celebrating extravagantly all the way with frequent sacrifices of choice bulls. David ceremonially dressed in priest's linen, danced with great abandon before God. The whole country was with him as he accompanied the chest of God with shouts and trumpet blasts. But as the chest of God came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, happened to be looking out a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before God, 
her heart filled with scorn. They brought the chest of God and set it in the middle of the tent pavilion that David had pitched for it. And then and there David worshipped, offering burnt offerings and peace offerings. And when David had completed the sacrifices of burnt and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the God of the angel armies and handed out to each person in the crowd, men and women alike, a loaf of bread, a date cake, and a raisin cake. Then everyone went home. Now, we're going to talk about this tonight, Nick. I, I want to read just a few more here. Uh, I'll read just the last verses here in a few minutes after after we start uh, talking about this. But, uh, you know, we, we go from a point in a time where David has now assumed the kingship over Israel. His calling has come to pass. He's, he's now in the midst of walking in what God has truly intended for him all of his entire life. He has, to, he has beat Saul. He has beat the Philistines. He has beat the Amalekites. He has, I mean, like he has literally went through war after war, battle after battle, fight after fight. He's lost best friends. He's lost good friends. He's lost family. He's lost stuff. I mean, you know, like, like he's been through a lot of stuff, man. And to get to this point right here, Nick, where, where David has finally come into the calling that God has on his life, um, he, he cannot contain himself. Uh, he gets to a point of where he, where the passion begins to overflow, and you know whenever whenever they bring the the, the chest the, the chest of God the Ark of the Covenant whatever name that you want to put on it the promises of God whatever whenever they bring that back to the holy city and they're bringing it back to its rightful place as as David begins to bring this into town. I think it's all starting to culminate right in front of him, and whenever that happens, you know, passion begins to overflow. And, and you know, whenever, whenever Nick, whenever you work for something, whenever you put something together, whenever you've struggled and you've battled and you've been in the middle of something for so long, and then you finally start to see the culmination. You finally start to see the fruits of the labor. You finally start to see the harvest come to pass, man. You can't really help but just kind of let the passion overflow and let the feelings and the, the heart and everything that you've worked for begin to just overflow in your life, man. Um, have, have you ever been to that point before? Have you ever had something that you've worked so hard for that you've really put in time and effort on, Nick, that you've, you've seen it come to pass, so now you're, you're really, you know, you're just passionate passionate about it man and, and and people don't necessarily understand the passion because because they you know God didn't speak the purpose to them but have you ever been to that point where you felt that kind of passion before yeah and i think that's something you know i felt personally uh, you know several times and um, you know, as you were kind of, you know, speaking over this, one of the things that kind of hit me was, you know, it, you know, leading up to those moments, you know, where, you know, things were, you know, finally worked out, things finally clicked, things were finally working out and moving the way they were supposed to be moving, you know, like leading up to that point, I think is where we need to learn to practice our praise. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, cause we, you know, in this you know situation we're seeing here, you know, we're talking about David, you know, being all excited and happy that he's got the outcome that, you know, he's finally looked forward to for such a long time. Absolutely. Um, but we also need to make sure and remember as an everyday Christian that we're not supposed to just praise God in the, you know, the outcome. Right. We're also supposed to praise God leading up to the outcome. Right. Um, you know, because that way, you know, we're practicing, you know, that way if we can be super happy and excited and joyful and praising God, even in the lowest valleys of our life, then how much more are we going to do that when we actually get to that point? True statement. You know, and we're going to get to that point, you know, where David experienced that, you know, and he's just out there dancing. He doesn't care who's looking at him or what's going on. He's dancing. He's excited. He's worshiping God. He's thankful for everything that's happened. Um, but, you know, I think as an everyday Christian, we also have to remember that, you know, we're supposed to be praising God and even in the midst of our valleys, in the midst of darkness. Um, and then when we get to that high point, when we get what we've always wanted and been praying for for months and weeks and years and whatever, however long it's been, you know, that's when, you know, our, our praise and our practice, our pray, our practicing of our praise mm-hmm. really shines and really glorifies God the most. Yeah, man. I mean, David had been committed to God through thick and thin. And, uh, you know, and, it's, and that's the thing. Like, even when situations were so bad that David was literally about ready to let his flesh overtake him, he was still committed to God. And, you know, now he gets to that point where it's like, man, I've been putting in so much effort and so much, you know, everything's happening and, and it's finally paying off, man. And, and, and that's what I try to get people in, and, and people still don't understand. I try to convey it from the stage, Nick, uh, on occasion where, you know, I'm like, I get so passionate about what I see out in the crowd, about the, the, the number of people I see in the crowd, about the, no, about the people who come to the altar. Uh, I get passionate whenever the praise team knocks it out of the park on a Sunday. Uh, I get passionate whenever 
whenever uh, I, I see tears of joy, I see people praising. Uh, I get passionate whenever people invite people to church and they get excited that people showed up to church, you know, with them and, and they enjoy church, you know, and it's like, I, I just get passionate about that kind of stuff, man, where it comes to a point that it bleeds out sometimes in the good and the bad. Uh, and, and it's like, you know, the thing about it is, is that there's always going to be, and we're going to talk about this here in a few about, there's going to be those McHales out there that's going to see our praise and going to see our passion and going to see, you know, how we react. We're only seeing a certain season session, you know, snippet, whatever you want to put there. Uh, that's what they're seeing, and they're making a judgment call off that. Um, but that, the Bible says that David's coming through, man, and he's dancing and he's praising. And, and, and first and foremost, I want you to check this, because it says that David was in his priestly robes. He was in his priestly attire, and, and, and he's going through the streets dancing. And, you know, no shout-out, no pain, no no you know, no you disgrace or anything else, uh, you know, to the Catholic faith or to the priest or whatever else. But, you know, I even asked the question Sunday. It's like, how many times do you see the priest out in the middle of the streets doing the gritty? You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or you know, or, or doing some kind of TikTok dance or just, you know, what, or acting loose. Or, or whatever the word you want to put there is like how many times do you see that you know they're they were called to uphold the the holy image and to be pristine and to be put together in the starched collar and no wrinkled clothes and you know all of that good stuff so the fact that david is out here in priestly robes doing a dance in the middle of the street doing his hammer you know getting his mc hammer on uh and and, and doing all that good stuff it's like you know as as Mikhail began to look at him, you know, she's thinking, oh, how look at this guy, you know, like like scorn began to fill her heart. The Bible says, and you know, uh, I, I talked about on Sunday, man. Uh, the Bible says that she was viewing him through a window, uh, through a window, and, and and if you go back and you read, it doesn't really say that you know she was up in a tower, or she was second story or whatever. But you know, if you try to put it into context a little bit, you know, if she was at ground level watching through a window, that the Bible says the whole country was with him. That 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 city was with him, you know, as they were going through the, the going through the streets. So I would imagine it was pretty crowded, right? So I, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily think that she was on the bottom level. You know what I'm saying? And here's the thing about it. So let's just say she was up second, third story, trying to watch this, and she's seeing everything happen through a window. Now the bad thing about that is, Nick, is that through a window you can only see kind of your 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 frame of vision right there. So you don't see what happened before. You don't see what happened after. You just kind of see in that moment, you know. And and I talked about on Sunday about how Mikhail, who was David's wife beforehand, people forget that, right? Like he was, she was David's wife before Saul tried to kill David. And as, as David was sent on the run, Saul took Michal away from David and basically gave her to another man. Okay. And so then David sends for her after Saul's death and says, Hey, you know, come back home now, you know, whatever the case may be. But, um, so, you know, during that moment while David was out running for his life and he was out trying to fend for himself, Michal never had to worry about anything. You know, she had somebody taking care of her. her. Her dad was the king. I mean, you know, like she, she didn't have to worry about anything. So she didn't necessarily understand. She didn't understand why David was praising. Why are you dancing for, David? Why are you praising? Why are you acting like a fool out here? Why are you showing off in front of everybody? Why are you doing the two-step? You know, like, like why, why, why are you? Are, oh, so everybody can look at you. So everybody can see you. Oh, it's all about attention, huh? It's all about, you know, all about everybody looking towards you. Because Mikhail was was looking at a scene, she was looking through the window, and one of the one of the viewpoints that God gave me from Sunday sermon was the fact of that judgmental people will always look at your life through a window. They'll look at your life through a window because they want to keep that wall between you and them. Because it's a lot easier to say that you don't like somebody than to understand somebody. It's a lot easier to put your opinion on something versus trying to learn why that person is dancing, why that person is praising, why that person is crying, why that person, you know, like, that's where we've even become in churches today, man, where it's like, you know, we'll, we'll sit almost seated higher than someone looking through that window going, why are they snotting and why are they crying or why are they clapping or why are they screaming or why are they running or why are they on their knees or, you know, why, why, why are they got their eyes closed or why are they just sitting there in their pew with their hands out or why, why are they sitting there with their head bowed? You know, it's like we're seeing scenes. We're seeing something through a window. And as long as we can keep that wall from the windows to the wall, I don't know why that was going through my head. I'm sorry, man. I was so, Fine, just get it out. I was so biblical. Then I went little John. Anyways, uh, so whenever you have that wall in between you right there, I think it gives you an excuse not to learn 
why that person's praising the way they're praising, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we put up uh, we we are professional wall builders um, as an American society these yeah. days. Yeah, um, you know, we we I, I say this all the time. You know, and I've always been a huge proponent for empathy uh, because I believe empathy is what this world needs more than almost anything other than Jesus. True. Um, you know, I think Jesus was the epitome of empathy. He Absolutely. understood everybody. Absolutely. He understood where they came from, and he understood their heart at the deepest, most personal level. Um, yet, you know, we are lacking empathy at such high levels. Apathy, um, with an A, is way more, you know, dominant in this world today. You know, we don't care about anything. We are selfish. We are, you know, again, building walls between us and the other peop- other person. Um, you know, I think empathy is something as a Christian we really need to look into and practice and get to, to get to know and get to do better. Uh, because, you know, if we are being more apathetic, if we're being more judgmental, if we're building walls between us and that person next to us, us and that person in our family we don't talk, want to talk to anymore, us and that homeless person down the street, us and that person that has bothered us time and time again or stabbed us in the back, you know, if we're constantly building walls, we're not going to reach people. Right. Um, you know, Absolutely. I think, you know, I've made this point. I think we've, even you've made this point. I know we've made this point before, but, you know, we as Christians need to stop building walls and start building bridges. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's something that's really going to help. That uh, still hits know, me right? with the goosebumps, know, right? dog. Exactly. Still hits I got me. you. Go ahead. Uh, but, you know, we, we need to just keep, um, you know, growing. The, the only way to grow the church, the only way to grow the kingdom of God is to reach out and help other people. You know, mm-hmm. you building up a wall, looking through a window and judging someone's life, judging someone's praise, judging mm-hmm. someone's struggles and their response to those struggles is not you building a bridge to connect yourself to that person. Right. You're just looking at them and just judging, saying, you know, and I think we, we almost get sidetracked by that sometimes because I know it's easy. I think, you know, sometimes we see somebody and we know that, you know, they're, um, you know, they're not the most trustworthy person. They've screwed us over before in the past. They are not the most reliable person. They're, you know, you know, somebody that we would see as kind of a scourge to society. Mm-hmm. And we're afraid to reach out to that person. Right. But, you know, again, we have to remember that God still loves that person. Right. You know, and, you know, if you really want to truly emulate Jesus, you know, you need to make sure you're still able to love and reach out and pray for that person, no yeah. matter what it is that they have done. Yeah. And, you know, that's something that's very, very difficult to do. And, you know, especially if you consider like, you know, extreme cases, you know, like a murderer and the murder victim and their family. Right. You know, something along those lines, trying to forgive someone like that is completely almost on a different level um, yeah. than, you know, otherwise. But again, you know, that's us being, you know, the, the judges and that's God's job. You know, that's right. not our job. We're supposed to be reaching people, loving them. Um, and, and it's hard. It is harder for some people than others. But I think, again, just bringing it all back together, empathy is very, very important um, in the Christian walk. We need to make sure that we're not, again, looking, you know, building walls. We're building bridges. We're connecting to people. We're looking at the whole picture, getting to know the person. Um, you know, getting down on their level, talking to them, getting to know them, getting to know their struggles. That's the only way we're going to really change the world. Um, you know, we can't change the world by, you know, building walls and saying, you know, because you wore a hat to church, you're not holy or because you wore holy jeans and, you know, you can't come in this building or anything you like that. You hit me hard right now, bro. Yeah, it's just certain things like that are just definitions of building walls instead of bridges. You know, I, mean, I, I think that's something that we need to we need to really, really take a deep inner look at ourselves. If you've ever experienced that situation, you know, where you've cut someone off before because of something they did, something they said, something they wore, uh-huh. and you're like, I'm not going to ever talk to this person again. Right. You know, maybe taking a second chance at that, taking a second look at that. You know, again, God, you know, God is the God of second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth chances. Yeah. You know, and if we're really, truly trying to emulate Jesus, you know, and, Absolutely. As, as, and, I, and something I caught myself saying to someone, you know, just last night, you know, like, you know, this person may have been the worst person you could possibly imagine. Someone Someone that screwed people over constantly, someone that you don't like. But you know, if Jesus gives that, if that, if there's still breath in their lungs, there's still a chance that God can use them. Absolutely, man. Um, and I, I think that's just something that we need to recognize and um, understand and move forward with as Christians. A- absolutely, man. Absolutely. And my question was from the stage on Sunday: is how different would the church be? How different would the world be if we treated everybody with the same amount of grace that God treats us with? You know. God, man, God is a merciful God. God is a good God. Now, God is a God of justice. I mean, we'll figure that out. He's a God of judgment. We'll figure that out, too. But, you know, through it all, man, like, God is such a good God, man. And it's like every time I go to him and I say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I plead the blood over this. Lord, I've messed up. Lord, I've sinned. You know, he knows when I'm going to sin, you know. And I come to him and I apologize. And he's like, all right, man, it's cool. You know, like, hey, bro, yeah, like, you know, go work on this. We're going to work on this together. Like if we were to treat each other with that with that same amount of grace, uh, dude, I think the church would be crazy. I think I mean, like we would see people, 
we would see we would see some Acts chapter two type stuff. I think we would see such diversity in the church that we've never seen before. I think that we would see all kinds of different tax brackets. I think we would see different backgrounds. I think we would see some crazy stuff happen because we're looking at people going, "Oh man, you know what? Uh, I know you messed up today, but you know what? God still loves you. Come to church anyways. You know, like let's let's pray with you. You know, let's 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 talk. Let's do let's do whatever we need to do. Not I'm judging what you got on. I'm judging." judging what your tattoos say. I'm judging you're wearing a hat. I'm judging you don't have a home right now. I'm judging your marriage is falling apart. I'm judging that your money's not right. Uh, I'm judging that that you listen to rock music. Uh, I'm judging that, uh, you know, like like whatever the judgment that you want to put on those people, you know, whatever you want to say. But it's like, where would we be at and what would we look like if instead of trying to critique and instead of trying to look at every person and go, you know, well, I don't understand why you do that or I don't agree with that or I I don't this like you know like uh, and I think I said this I don't know I may have said this before but like you know it's like God did not put the world on a conference call when he called you you know so like not everybody's going to understand not everybody's going to agree not everybody's going to be supportive not everybody is going to be in your corner and that's fine But what you have to do is to focus more upon what God said versus what people are doing around you and at that moment that's whenever you really truly see You know, and and your praise is different. You know, you don't worry about the people around you and your praise becomes different. And that's where we get back to this story, Nick, where his praise has become different. He's out dancing in the middle of the streets. He's not doing it in private. He's not throwing up a private sacrifice. He's praising God out in public. You know, Mm -hmm. thank you, Lord. Mad dancing for you. And so then the Bible says that, you know, that she gets mad, that scorn fills her heart. I love this part because I, I, and I hit just a little bit on this, but that basically like, that 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 check this out that that everybody that was in that square in that town or in that celebration that David blessed every person that was there he sent every person home men and uh, men and women alike a loaf of bread a date cake and a raisin cake then everyone went home I love it because Nick David was blessing people that wasn't even in battle with him you know David was blessing every person and and, and I hit this on Sunday you know whether you've been in that church one Sunday or you've been in that church every Sunday for five years which I don't think anybody can say that uh, even myself, I've missed one service. I still blame that on my wife to this day, you know? Shout out. I love her. She puts up with me. But, uh, but you know, like, I don't know if anybody can say they've been to every service that Fruition's ever had. But the thing about it is, is that, you know what, that whether you've been there one time or whether you've been there a thousand times, you're still going to eat and you're still going to be blessed and you're still going to get taken care of and you're still going to be a part of what God wants to do. You know, and, and and I love that because David was not worried about himself. And that's what I tried to point out through scripture on Sunday is that if this was all for attention and this was all for him, then David wouldn't have blessed anybody else. David wouldn't have worried about anybody else, man. And that's the thing about it. Like people can say that you're selfish. People could say that you're self-motivated or that you're, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever kind of hurtful words they want to throw at you. But as long as you're blessing other people through the process, and it's not about you, but it's about God and blessing other people through God, you know what I'm saying? Then at that point, it's like, I don't care what words they say, they're not going to hold to you because what you're doing is for God and for God alone. So let's go to this point, man, right here. David blesses people. He sends them home. And then it says, and and this is the part I didn't read. It says, David returned home to bless his family. Mikhail, Saul's daughter, came out to greet him. How wonderfully the king has distinguished himself to, like, I can hear her just talking in like that valley talk. You know what I'm saying? Talking in that judgmental, you know, I'm better than you. Why are you doing this for? Let me see if I can, let me see if I can catch that moment. How wonderfully the king has distinguished himself today, exposing himself to the eyes of the servants' maids like, like some burlesque street dancer. I mean, like she is diminishing his praise. She's talking down on his praise. You know, she's saying, basically, you done this for attention. And and, and if you don't watch it, Nick, if you don't watch it, that is the number one excuse. When people don't understand people's praise, they say they do it for attention. Man, I feel that. I may post that on Facebook before the diet's over with. There you go, get it. Oh, man, I tell you what. But that's the truth. I mean, that is the absolute truth. When we don't understand, why are they up there dancing for? Well, they just doing it for attention. 
You know, we're like that's the that's the category that we throw it into. Why are they crying on stage? Oh, well, they just doing it for attention. You know, why are they praying for it? They just doing it for attention. Why are they clapping? Just doing it. You know, like we put it into that into that category because that's we we put it there and it makes us feel good. It makes us feel safe because we don't want to understand why that person truly is praising the way they're praising for. But if you find out and you watch this really quick right here, you'll find out that, man, that those words, the Bible says that the power of life and death lies in the tongue, right? So you'll find these words right here are not going to be good. But tell me, Nick, tell me, man, why, why do we do that for? Why do we, why do we classify or focus on that, that instead of understanding, we just categorize and go, well, they're just doing it for attention. Yeah. And I think a lot of it comes down, especially in the case of, you know, her here. Um, it comes down from a, uh, I, I think, you know, like, I mean, you, you saw how she was directed towards her comments to him saying that he was trying to get the attention of girls. Right. Um, you know, and I think this comes, you know, very specifically. Oh, you're going, to you're going in a way total yeah, different right, direction, bro. Somewhere. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I think this is something that, you know, she was personally struggling with that, you know, like she wasn't good enough that she couldn't, she wasn't getting the attention. She yeah, wasn't, she wasn't, yeah, exactly. She wasn't getting the attention. Right. You know, she couldn't get what he had even like, he, you know, she was up there in a room all alone while he was down in the street dancing. Right. And, you know, and then to her, you know, I think it comes from, you know, a place of guilt, a place of insecurity, a place of, you know, like what, you know, give me attention, that kind of thing. Um, but I, I think it's important again, you know, for us to understand, you know, cause I, I've been in that, in that position before, you know, where I'm in church and I'm looking over and, you know, all these people are, you know, they're up and dancing they're maybe they're on stage doing all this. And, you know, that thought has crossed my mind before, you know, are they doing this for God or are they doing this for attention? We're all guilty. You know, we're all I, guilty, I think, man. I think we're all guilty of doing right. that before because again, we don't, it's almost at that point, like we don't understand what they're going through. Again, it's just cause it's, you can almost easily make sense of it. You know, I, right. I don't understand why. You know, they would be doing that if not for attention. Yeah. You know, like why else? What other reason is there that someone would be doing something like that? You know, and as a lost person, that's something as a Christian we need to be aware of that they are thinking. Right. Because if if Christians are thinking that, lost people are definitely thinking that. Right. Right. They're looking at you wondering what in the world is this person doing when they drive and you're parked at a red light and you got your arms raised praising God at this red light and they look over you like you're freaking crazy. Right. You know, they're wondering what in the world is up with this person. But again, they're looking through the window of their car. Yeah. They don't understand what's going on in that situation. See how you tied that together? Yeah, exactly. Right? Absolutely. Um, but again, we just need to make sure as, as Christians that, you know, if, if we are asking those questions, we need to do some introspection. We need to look at ourselves and Absolutely. ask ourselves the question, like, yeah. why is it that I am judging their praise? Oh, yeah. Why am yeah. I more focused mm-hmm. on what they're doing and why they're doing it versus... Well, I'm, well, well, you know, like maybe I need to work on myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think you, I mean, you've said it before, you know, if you're more focused on the, the crying babies in church and what, if someone's raising their hands or not in church, or yeah. somebody's praying the right way or not in church, right. someone's dressed a certain way in church. Yeah. If you're praying, if you're paying attention to those things, you're not paying attention to the right thing. Right. Absolutely. You know, you're, you're, you come to church for Jesus. You know, right. If you can't, like you said Sunday, if you come to church for any other reason, you came for the wrong reason. Right. Um, and I think that's something that we need to recognize, you know, when we catch ourselves in that situation, doing what she's doing, where we're like, why are they praising like that? Why are they doing that? Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? Yeah. You know, if we catch ourselves doing that in the middle of a church service or in the middle of God's presence, you know, we need to ask ourselves a couple questions like, hey, right. where am I at? Where's my yeah. heart at in this situation? Yeah, absolutely, man. And so I love, man, I love how David responds because David is at a point where he's like, huh, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself, you know, like he like he just comes at her. And that's the thing about it, man. Like, you know, whenever you come back with a response, after you've been through some stuff, Nick, after you've really kind of like, you know, you navigated it, man, you just don't have time for pettiness no more, man. You know, you just don't have time for the pettiness of, of you know, somebody accusing you of something that you know is so outlandish that it's just like, I'm just going to Watch this right now. So you know what David replied? He said, he said, in God's presence, I'll dance all I want to. You ain't going to hold me down. You ain't going to stop me from praising. Just because you're in the room, I may even praise harder. You know what I'm saying? He says, he chose me over your father and the rest of your family and made me prince over God's people, over Israel. Oh, yes, I'll dance to God's glory more recklessly even than this. And as far as I'm concerned, I'll gladly look like a fool. But among these maids you're so worried about, I'll be honored no end. So what he's saying is right here, he's saying, yo, I'm gonna, I'll gladly look like a fool because I know what God's done. I will, I will do what I need to do. I will, I, like, I could never shout enough. I could never dance enough. I could never pray enough. I could never clap enough. I could never post enough. I could, I, you know, I, I don't think, Nick, that there's a time, like, if we woke up in the morning, in the morning, and just started saying, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, all day long. That's all we uttered. 
it still wouldn't be enough. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's never going to be enough, but he said, you know what? He said, I tell you what, even if it takes me looking like a fool, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to take care of him. And, yo, these people, these people that you're worried about, these people, even though I didn't do it for them, they're going to honor me through the process of it. And the rest. I like this because the last verse says, Mikhail, Saul's daughter, was barren the rest of her life, man. And... Again, I I don't like it. I mean, but at the time, the points in times that we're in in this moment, we're still trying to populate the earth. We're still trying to build kingdoms. So the 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 woman's you know mainstay was to take care of the home, was to produce children. And does that sound barbaric? Bar, uh, barbaric? Yes. Does that sound archaic? Yes. Does it sound like you know has things changed over the last I don't know couple thousand years? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying. But in this moment, in this moment. Her speaking death over over David's praise spoke death over her womb, and she didn't even know it. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and, and, and I made this last point, and, and then we can just try to wrap it up a little bit from there, man. I've really enjoyed this one tonight. But uh, uh, l- l- let's make this point, man. We... I, we have to be careful, Nick, whenever we sp- whenever we speak death over something, because we could honestly be speaking death in somebody's praise, and we don't understand why they're doing what they're doing, and, and, and we go, and we just attack it, you know, oh, I wish they wouldn't do that, oh, I wish they wouldn't just say that, oh, I wish they wouldn't cry like that. What if we're speaking death over ourselves? What if we're speaking death over promises that God's given us? What if we're speaking death over that because we would rather classify than to try to understand? You know, we would we would rather we would rather just say, you know what, this is probably why they're doing it, instead of just saying, why are you doing that for? Let's have a conversation. Let's talk about it. And honestly, whenever we do that, Nick, we we it says her her womb was barren for the rest of her life. She could not produce anymore after that. And I never want to be at a place in my Christian walk that I'm not producing. I'm not talking about kids. I'm talking about producing, bro. I'm talking about producing blessings, producing, uh, 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 producing commitment, producing uh, a drive, a will, a passion, compassion, empathy, apathy, whatever you want to talk about, whatever the, all those words, those psychological <laughs> words that you were throwing in 20 minutes ago. Like, I, I never want to be at a point in my life where I'm not producing something you know what i'm saying and i have to watch the way i speak because because i may end up in death speaking death over something else Mm -hmm. yeah i mean this literally you know quite literally brings you know truth to the phrase check yourself before you wreck yourself because she very well did wreck herself yeah absolutely Um, you know i think it's pretty crazy is that a t-shirt maybe coming out we've got so many 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 t-shirts man (laughs) we're just gonna have one with like 40 phrases on. oh absolutely um you know i just think it's it's important for us to remember that you know our words have power i mean it says that throughout the bible you know your words have power you know, life and death lie on the tongue. Yeah. And, you know, if you're if you're going to speak death over yourself or over other people, then you have to, you know, expect that you know death could follow you. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I, and I think that's something you know we we forget. You know that we are supposed to have a fear of God. Yeah. Um, you know, and that does you know lie with respect, but it also lies in the fact that you know if you cross God, who is a jealous God, you absolutely, know, then you may face consequences for that. You know, God is a forgiving God, but if you're going to speak death over something and not ask for forgiveness for it, then you've sinned and you've just lived a life of sin. Right. Um, so I think it's something that we need to make sure we're very careful of. You know, when we're speaking life, you know, when we're speaking anything to somebody else, um, understanding that, you know, what we say could change the entire course of their entire life or their entire day or their entire week or month, whatever it may be. Right. You know, you, your words could be you know, the very thing someone needed to hear or the very thing someone didn't need to hear. Absolutely. Um, you know, you can confirm their deepest, darkest fears and, you know, disgusting thoughts and ideas, or you could speak life into them when they've been dealing with that stuff for a right. very long time. And, right. you know, you just need to make sure you're careful because, again, that stuff can literally come back to bite you like it did her. Um, so, you know, we as Christians just need to make sure that we're careful about the words that we speak, you know, the things that we are sending out into the world. Um, you know, it's even something I talk to the youth about, you know, is we are called to be different than the world yeah. you know people sometimes we are the only bible that people read and absolutely. you know if we're speaking death over people all the time then people are going to think that's all the bible is yeah it's right, speaking right. Death over absolutely things. you know if we're bitter and negative and destructive all the time yeah that's what people are going to think that being a christian is like right so again we need to make sure that we're careful about that um you know as an everyday christian just being careful watching yourself checking your tongue you know making sure that you're not looking at people through a window that you're not being apathetic that you're being empathetic instead Making yeah. sure that we're not building walls, we're building bridges, we're connecting to people, right? Um, you know, and understanding that everybody's praises look different. You know, yeah. I think one of the biggest things that spoke to me and 
Um, you know, just because this is something that I've always been thinking about. But, you know, like on Sunday when you were talking about, you know, how many of you guys will cheer at your favorite oh, sports team and, right. cuss and throw yeah. things at the TV yeah. um, because, you know, people who will never know you and never care about you did something that you're never going to be able to control. Absolutely. Um, but yet, you know, you're sitting there on, you know, in Sunday service and you're not necessarily mean judging your praise in this situation, but, you know, you're sitting there on Sunday service, you know, thankful to a God and you're just sitting there playing on your phone the whole service. Right, right. You know, like, you know, are you praising God in that moment? Yeah. You know, what, where, you, I think that's, again, another one of those moments where you need to check your heart. Right. You know, and really understand it. Because I remember being in that situation before, you know, always worried about, you know, who was going to judge me in church? You know, yeah, like, oh, I, yeah, I mean, I, like I'm sitting there and like, you know, do I raise my hands? No, I'm too afraid to raise my hands. I'm yeah. even too afraid to stand up because if I stand up, you know, how, how crazy is our mind sometimes right. that I was sitting in a full, I was sitting in a church full of people standing up and praising God. And I was afraid that as soon as I stood up, people were going to be like, he finally stood up. Yeah. He finally did it. And yeah. everybody's going to give me more attention. Like, right. again, how crazy are our thoughts right. sometimes? Absolutely. Um, but, you know, I, I remember being in that place, you know, so many times when I was younger in a church setting where I'm like, you know, is somebody going to judge me if I stand up? Is someone going to judge me if I raise my hands? Is right. someone going to judge me if I do this or yeah. that? Um, you know, and, and again, the best way to remove that judgment that people feel is to just not do it. Absolutely. But unfortunately, people know that people judge, you know, like, yeah. and that's just yeah, yeah, something yeah. that we know when we go into church because of, you know, religious people who have, you know, put us down for so long. Absolutely. Um, and we just need to understand that, you know, that's not Jesus. That's not Christianity. That's not mm. what it's supposed to look like. And so we as everyday Christians need to switch that up, you know, make sure that we're not looking at people through a window and that we're not judging the way they're praising and that we're not judging their situation, period, you know, and yeah. especially not until we learn about their situation and learn what they've been through and experienced. Absolutely, man. I appreciate it so much. And yeah, I mean, if there's anything, let's just, you know, if I could get a word in edgewise, just to, just to get it off, man. Just, not tonight. Absolutely. Don't judge my praise. Don't judge it, man. You, you've not walked in those shoes. You don't know where we've been, what we've been through. And so every person is going to praise differently. If you've enjoyed this, please, by all means, let us know. I think you can hit the like button, leave a comment yeah, or something like review, that. Can we do that rate, review? Yeah, you can do like all of that. that good stuff. Again, tell your friends, tell your family. Uh, we are so proud and honored uh, to be able to see a, uh, I would call it, Nick, a four times increase four times the increase maybe uh in downloads and stuff like that double at least uh so that means it's getting out there uh and as always check us out on facebook on youtube check out our website and uh if not anything else man come see us in person 200 south lincoln boulevard hodgeville kentucky we'll be there uh wednesday night at 7 15 sunday morning at 11 15 we would love to see you this is pastor keenan with my sidekick nick thank you very much have a blessed week and we love you guys very much